All right, it's time. We're gonna test out the Osmo Pocket 3. I've got the, the little tripod base with the extender. We got the wireless mic on my, on my chest here, but I bribed the kids with some coffee and they're gonna help me out and be my guinea pigs. Ta-da! Hello, children. Hello. Hello. What you got? Um, I got the white caramel espresso shake. Okay. I got a, a white lavi. It's like a lavender. White mocha. Lavender white mocha. Sounds good. good. Tastes like my deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. So realizing now, editing this video, that the first two tests that we did didn't get recorded. Um, I handed the camera to Bryce and we tested how far the tracking would go and we tested the distance on the wireless mic. I probably got maybe 30, 40 yards away and Bryce said he still saw the, the meter moving. Obviously we, we didn't record that, so there's no, I don't have any, any footage here, but that's why we're, it seems like this next clip, we're just gonna jump right in like, a, like there's no beginning. It's because the first two tests didn't get recorded. So there you go. All right, we are, oh, so face tracking's on by default. If I, once I turn it on, it stays on. All right, so now we're recording uh, and we're using D-Log so I can play around with the color LUTs. Um, so the color by default is washed out, right? There's no color vibrancy, all right? And this is using, this, we're still using the, the wireless mic. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead. This is basically, this is what it would look like if I was vlogging, okay? This is, this is vlogging. So now we're going to turn this off, which is this button here. Yep, transmitter's off. So now this is on, on camera mic, so we're gonna just hear the difference in the same exact setting, same exact everything, all right? And this is what it basically would sound like if I'm vlogging, right? I'm gonna turn my head if I'm looking. And, I th and I, I'm curious also how much, how sensitive Omni this is compared to if I turn my head, right? Doing this, you know, right, right, left, left, okay? And then let's go switch this back on. All right, now we're reconnected. Now we're back on this mic here. So I'm on my left, I'm talking to my left, I'm talking to my right, I'm talking to my right, and boom. <laughs> Are you tracking me? Oh. No, no tracking. Uh, I think I double tap. And it like stays recording when you flip it, right? There. Yeah, yeah, it stays, stays recording. Okay, now it's tracking you, Bryce. How's your coffee? It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good? It's a big coffee. I feel like they normally don't go to 24 ounce for hot coffees. All right, so now we're back to normal color profile. You can definitely see the difference from the washed out white. This actually looks pretty good outside. I, I'm, I'm happy with this color. This would be like my iPhone. But for the sake of comparisons, we are now going to record. And I got the cameras about at the exact same height, same distance. And we're gonna just kind of compare side by side. Also audio, so you'll hear the difference. I think that's gonna be the game changer is I'm really curious what the onboard audio sounds like compared to iPhone. So we're gonna to switch to that one second. And now we are recording, um, we're, gonna, we're, we're using onboard audio and we're gonna compare side by side to the iPhone. Cause that's the one, I think that's literally my one complaint with the iPhone, other than not being able to see myself using the 4K, the, the, good, the good lens, good camera, is uh, the audio. The iPhone's audio is not great. 99% um, of people who record with the iPhone always use some other microphone. And, you know, of course, again, I'm going for convenience, I'm going for accessibility, and so iPhone, I can't go with that. But I'll be honest with you, it's so nice being able to see myself and have a, have a viewfinder again. Using this iPhone with, with the, you know, the reverse camera has been, uh, has been rough, so. Also, let's compare stability. Um, obviously, the, the, the Pocket 3 has a gimbal, and I'm walking right now, you know. Um, can you, is, is there a noticeable difference between the iPhone and the Pocket 3? We're gonna be comparing that as well. All right, and now we're back to D log, and we're gonna we're gonna this is this is the plain D log compared to the iPhone, and then let's color grade it and let's see the difference side by side. The color graded D log compared to the iPhone's natural color, and that is what we're doing. Yeah, man, this camera is so much wider than the iPhone. So who's trying to kill the dirt bike riders? It's probably not dirt bikes, probably like... Yeah, no, it is. It's a little dirt bikes. Really? Yep. Purple and pink one. The little moped thing. Yeah, she always right. rides home to school on that. <laughs> See, that's sick. 
it's tracking Sierra. And she turned, it turned with her. And then I think a double tab turns it off. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what I want. So it's not permanent. Much better. So, so if I have it off by default, I can just double tap and it activates it. That's what I want. Because then I know I can just, if I want to track someone real quick and just keep it locked on, on, on somebody. Very cool. Very cool. I would say the thing that I'm most excited to um, see right now, it, like, is it, it, the color grading. I've never color graded before. I've always, I've loved Canon's, like, oh, uh, temperature. Sierra and I were just talking about how, like, we like more of like, a warm tone. When it comes to video, I definitely like more of a warm tone. And Canon has always got to just have a, the, 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 the default Canon profile is always my favorite. You know, I've used Sony's, I've used Samson's, never really liked the pro, color profile compared to um, Canon. Now that I'm using this and I have the option of D-Log and everyone seems to color grade their, their video footage and all the reviews I, I watched and listened to, they all said the same thing. They're like, yeah, you need to, you know, use D-Log so that you can use the, like, Luxes or whatever. So we're going to test that out. This, this is all new to me. I was watching a video before I, um, before I, we left to see, like, what the process was. And I was like, all right, I got to test this out. So, again, we're using D-Log right now. And we'll, uh... Get back in Final Cut Pro and start messing with some color grading. All right, another side-by-side -side test here in the house. We got the iPhone next to the Pocket 3. And I don't know what color grade I'm in. I think I'm in, I'm in, I'm in D-Log. Can I see? Let's see. Oh, can't do while I'm recording. All right. All right, so now we're normal. So this, this is what it looks like. Now, and on the screen, it looks good. Like, if this is what... Uh, oh, that's not what I want. There we go. Like if this is what it looks like when I'm editing, this looks pretty freaking good. And again, I'm just doing side by side, iPhone, Pocket 3. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, now we're gonna walk through the house as if I was like, now granted, normally I would probably have more light on, but this actually looks pretty freaking good, right? Right across, like I'm looking at the, the, the uh, outside light. And then we'll come into my room. This still looks freaking good. Holy crap, this one inch sensor is like night and day difference. My number one complaint with the uh, the Pocket 2 was the low light. That's literally why I took it back. But this is looking really good. That's incredible. All right, so now we're back to D-Log. And like I said, it looks muted on my screen, but uh, it might also have been when I, because I, I transitioned so much, but before it looked really good. In here, it wasn't as good. So this is D-Log versus iPhone. All right, I'm just kind of moving around a little bit. So the gimbal definitely has like a little bit of a sway. It has to kind of catch up with me versus the iPhone is kind of locked. All right, let's go back to normal one more time. Yeah, that's what it was. The white balance was just off from being out there in there. This looks better. So one last time, this is on normal. All right, this is, I believe, normal mode. Uh, kind of just testing the low light, we're outside. Uh, sunrise is down, but there's still a little bit of blue in the sky. You can see... So there's there's the comparison to the sky. See, that's that's, that's getting a nice light from the uh, from the kitchen, right? Kind of come around here, try and get less light. That's still pretty freaking good. If, if it looks half as good as it does on my screen, that's not bad in regular. Let's, let's play with the low light mode. All right, so this is regular. I had to figure out how to freaking turn on low light mode, All right? So this is just regular, which again, I'm looking at the screen on my on the camera, but I'm also looking at my phone, and it's low. All right, now this is low light mode, and so we'll have to just compare side by side when we get uh, back to the computer. I mean, I definitely can tell the difference, but I think it's doing like some weird compensation. Um, all right, back to normal, and this is, again, I wish, I have to go back and look, I'll, find, I'll, I'll look for that video right now when I get done from here, and see what the, the Osmo Pocket 2 looked like in this environment. Like I said, on camera, it looks really good. On the iPhone, it looks much darker, but still not terrible. The, the color is the only thing that, that that's bothering me. And now we're back in low light mode. So this is low light. Let me just go look at the color, the light behind me. That's actually not bad, honestly. With the with the light literally behind me. Again, on my on the camera, it looks way brighter. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah, it's trying to adjust now. <laughs> there we go. 
Yeah, that's actually that's that's fucking good. It's having a hard time adjusting. Maybe maybe I'm throwing it off by trying to tap my face. I'm tapping my face, but like focus on this. Maybe I should let it do its thing. Yeah, it's I'm I'm watching it adjust in real time. It's pretty cool. The app is actually really really good. There's a, there's a companion app on the iPhone. It gives me total control, which is a lot easier to control. Also, when I'm um, you know, I want more control. I can see everything on the iPhone where I can't see everything on the camera. But honestly, that low light's not bad. Like, I'm pretty happy with that. If I, had, if I had to use that going into a dark spot, I could just flip it over to low light mode. But see, even this is normal, and even normal's not that bad. Now, let's compare it to the iPhone. All right, so now we are comparing side-by-side -side iPhone to Pocket 3. And just kind of change the lighting a little bit. And then we're going to do this where the light's behind me and see what the cameras do. There we go. Side by side, side by side, side by side. All right, this thing is tons of fun. I'm really enjoying playing around with it, but while I've been playing around with that, Tiffany's home. Pizza! Because why? National Pizza Day. National Pizza Day. National Pizza Day. We got that one, which I'm really excited about. It just came out of the oven. It's got some spinach, chicken, sun dried tomatoes. I think it's got like an Alfredo sauce. Creamy um, garlic. Creamy garlic, okay. And then Sierra's got bell peppers. Yes. And Sierra, what did you just get? What did I just get? Yeah. We're like, oh, I'm like, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, my first credit card. Your first credit card? Little adult. Yeah. 19. Technically, you could have got one last year. Yeah. But she got, you, got the, you got the application, and you're just like, oh, you've been pre approved, you know, blah, blah, blah. Set it up. Start building that credit. Yeah, she basically did doing the exact same thing that I did. When I, when I turned 18 and I got my own checking account, it was one of those like student bundle things. So I got a checking savings credit card. And it was like, I think $500 was like my limit, like right off the gate. Um, but of course, technology is different now. She literally did it online and got approved like right away, like June, right? And then of course with technology, she's able to add it to her like Apple wallet right away. So she can actually start using it right now. She doesn't even have the physical card yet. You know, it'll probably be like a week or two before she gets it, but um, yeah. And so she's just, you know, setting it up. And because it's through her bank, really easy for her to like, you know, charge something on it. And then a day or two later, immediately just transfer money from her checking or savings account and pay it off. So she's very smart with her money. And so I think she's going to do great with this. And, uh, you know, later this year when she's looking at maybe buying a new car, she'll already have some credit established. And then here's Tiff's veggie. Totally our style. Thin crust, add jalapenos, Bryce's. Loading it up because he's in a Fortnite tournament. Yeah, there's like one hour left, so we're trying to. It's a zero build one, and we need to be like a certain rank to play it. So me and Gabe played a couple of rank games, and we just got like a 30 kill win. It's crazy. Nice. All right, so for continuity purposes, for total review, I decided to reshoot the tracking. I want to show this off of like what this is capable of. All right. Obviously, there's a limit on how far the gimbal can go. I'm going to hit it right here. So it's 180 right there. Oh, is it still going? It goes all the way around. Is it this way? Maybe it's this way. There is, at some point, there is a limit on how far the gimbal can go. I think it might be this way. Yep, there it is right there. Okay, so that's as far as it goes. So it's good to know that I can basically go 360 on the right. So if I make sure I remember to set the camera up at a certain point, I can go all the way around to the back side like that, all right? So that's, that's pretty awesome. Even if, if the side of my face, I, I can turn around 360, it still has me, right? The tracking is pretty awesome. Also, we're using the wireless mic. So this, is, this, is, this right here, this is exactly what I was talking about, I don't know, a few weeks ago, how I said having this camera and this setup would be awesome for this exact reason. I'm over here, I'm doing stuff, I'm moving stuff, and you're still getting like crystal clear audio, even though there's, a, there's obstruction and there's stuff going on, right? Oh, it lost me at the pillar. <laughs> it lost me at the pillar, there we go. <laughs> Let's do it again, ready, ready? Boom. No, it lost me. It, it can't pick me back up. Come over here. There it goes. So there you go, that's the, that's the tracking mode. Also, I got the mic on my collar here, and so um, I noticed yesterday when I was uh, listening to the audio back with it being in the center of my chest, um, it sounded good, but obviously when I tilted down, it, it picked up uh, 
you know, more audio. So it definitely needs to be higher to my mouth. I know a lot of the guys will clip it to their hat, which if you think about how, how far that distance is, it makes sense that this needs to be on my lapel, right? It's a lapel mic. Uh, the magnet's nice though to clip on to, you know, other locations and whatnot. But um, yeah, more testing for sure. But uh, I am absolutely sold and loving this camera so far. All right, let's wrap up this review slash trial run of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I'm just gonna say it, I absolutely love this camera. I am so happy and thrilled with the purchase. Um, first and foremost, the low light is incredible. I'm so happy to find out not only does it look good in normal, but low light as well, uh, low light mode, but it's better than the iPhone. Like going side by side comparison with the iPhone, like it blew it out of the water. So that right there was my number one gripe with the Pocket 2. The fact that the Pocket 3 solve that problem and then some, I mean, at this point, I almost want to go side by side with the G7X. I'm curious how, how this competes with the G7X, but incredible low light opportunity there. So I'm very, very happy with that. Um, as far as uh, audio goes, I think the iPhone's onboard microphone is better than this onboard microphone, though I can be a lot closer with this camera, which this kind of, this feels a little awkward being this close because with the iPhone, I'm used to being further away because it's a much tighter uh, 1X. I think that's the thing too, is I think being able to bring this closer will be better um, for the audio. But we have this, so it's really not that concern. If it's something I know I'm gonna be um, vlogging for a certain period of time and I'm able to mic myself up, I will always be using this because it just sounds so much better. Um, but again, for everyday vlogging, um, you know, onboard microphone is good enough. With that being said, my iPhone is still gonna be my everyday carry. Uh, I don't plan on carrying this with me all the time, uh, though I will increase the amount of time that I do bring it with me as time goes on and I find I get more and more comfortable with it and um, what I can do with it. Also, very curious about traveling with it, like putting it in my pocket. I know I have a hard case, but how does that really you know, fare with being in my pocket? More on that later. The last thing I'll say is uh, I spent all morning learning about D-Log and LUTs and color correction. So I have a much better understanding now of what actually is happening when I record in D-Log. Basically, it, it neutralizes the colors. I add the LUT that DJI gives us that converts it from D-Log to the 709 color profile. And then that puts it back to a normal area where we can now do color correction and make changes to it. It's not an actual color grade or you know, a better look. In fact, I think the iPhone looks better. In fact, I prefer the iPhone's look natively over the DJI's standard look. Um, more testing, obviously, in different lighting situations. We're gonna go outside today and do some more vlogging outdoors. I'm curious what it looks like there. But with the option of shooting in D-Log and then doing some LUT color corrections and whatnot, or doing color corrections via LUTs, I think we're gonna have a lot more control and have a much cooler um, cinematic look. So more on that in the future. Um, for now, I'm gonna shoot in the normal color profile, the native color profile, and then later on, I will do some testing with D-Log and find a LUT and a look and a style that I wanna make my own. And then moving forward, we will ch change the vlog to that look and style. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below your preferences, your thoughts, what you liked better than the other. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.